first year in many where I'm actually so excited about fashion. This year, the trends are so reminiscent of our childhood, but not in like a galaxy emoji kind of way, although I have seen that and please don't let that be a thing. I think the biggest thing that will have us all in a chokehold this year is the year 2010s. And no, I'm not predicting this, this is a fact. There's a white kick in no Vizlon, five gal deep in a folder skip. She asked my why not turn on the heat on the seas door heat, but a case got Trend cycles have gone from like on average a 20 year lifespan to now like a 10 year lifespan. And dare I say even quicker than that. I mean, in my life alone, I've lived through the 2010s and I was back already like, and I'm only 22, what? Seeing big influencers such as Kylie Jenner recreating her King Kylie Tumblr makeup and Addison Rae posting selfies on an iPhone 5 with heavy high exposure filters. It's like we're posting unironically again, but back in the 2010s. Since 2020, we've wanted like more of a nostalgic and we're really going back to our roots in our childhood and we just want to feel comforted i think especially in fashion right now let's get on with it so i think the first biggest influence on our generation is obviously influencers we've already seen girls wearing chokers nerdy glasses that look like we brought from claire's accessories heeled boots hair tinsel pointel fabric knee-high socks hello kitty and the list literally goes on and here i've just said one of the biggest trends that will be coming full force in this year and that's hello kitty obviously it's no news to anyone that hello kitty it's its 50th anniversary this year and we've seen these pop-up events around london although this however won't be here to stay it will come and go real quick just like barbie this leads me on to the next influence of pop culture movies i think there's three movies coming out this year that we've already started to see the influence of through fashion and already some big fashion runway shows I'm no movie girl, so I couldn't even tell you what movies are coming out other than these three. The first one I want to talk about, Priscilla. If you guys can't tell by this and the blue eyeshadow and whatever, I love the 60s, 70s look, always have. But let's talk where my love for it started. When Elvis was released, this piqued my interest and many other people's interest around the world in the 60s and 70s fashion and music. I can understand why the Elvis movie was so loved in the first place, not because Austin Butler played Elvis, but because I feel like our generation are finally experiencing fashion in a way that when we were younger, maybe it was like uncool or too modest. For a hot minute there, since 2020, I think we were all so lost of ourselves, mine included. And after watching Elvis, we started to see a more 70s look kind of come into our day-to-day -day life. I'd like to think this was Elvis is doing and not Taylor Swift's doing, but we've seen things like how we boot, leather, good quality lasting pieces of clothes, secondhand clothes and I do think if done the right way this can be timeless. I think when we all see the Priscilla movie and more people are talking about it I do think it will be more like heightened with things like blue tights, bulb makeup, especially blue eyeshadow right now, tiered lace skirts, swing coats and cardigans, ponchos and so much more. I mean, we've already seen a few of these pieces in the Sandy Liang Fall Winter 2024 runway with things like the tweed looking old lady button up jackets, the soft pastel pink hues that we saw in the Jean Paul Gaultier by Simone Rocha Couture Spring 2024 runway. We also saw some corseted looking details in the dresses too. Again, mirroring the Priscilla movie, although not made because of the movie. Also in this show, we saw such hyper feminine elements such as bows and the draping. And to my point about this year being the year that hyper feminism meets hyper masculinism, um, did I say that right? A brand that comes to mind on the hyper masculine side is Coach. More specifically, the Fall 24 show that everyone and their uncle seems to be talking about right now for many reasons, but the first being, as we all know, the bag on bag trend. The most when I watched it was there was a lady walking down with one shoe and she wasn't holding it and it wasn't on her bag, so why is anyone talking about that? Now, obviously, they're a leather brand, so we were bound to see some super hyper masculine elements creep in. The one that stood out to me the most though was these big, ugly, worn, slouchy looking boots. And if I haven't said already, slouchy boots are back, baby. Talking about more hyper masculine, like harshy, grungy, do I say indie sleeves looking things. This leads me on to the next movie that's coming out this month, I believe, Back to Black. Will I be watching it, you ask? No, I won't. Purely because I don't think the lady really looks that much like Amy Winehouse. 
So that's my own issue, I guess. But again, this whole style that is creeping in, this indie sleaze. Now with movies like Devil Wears Prada still being probably the lead fashion inspo for the office core girlies out there, and the OG Mean Girls movie being the pioneer of Y2K fashion, which do I bother mentioning the new Mean Girls movie or not? Because surely nothing can ever beat the original, right? So this leads me on to talking about the next big influence this year in a movie, Challengers. Now, let's be real, like I said, I'm not a movie girl, so I'm not gonna be seeing this when it comes out, but we've already massively seen the influence through these tennis polo shirts through some big fashion houses already, such as Miu Miu, and the polo shirt definitely being their main character for the spring, summer 24 fashion show which again is influencing some of these smaller trends such as bubble skirts and nautical sailor core style. We're starting to see these sporty masculine things mixing with more softer things like sheer skirts. A brown which I think really embodies this well is Gimaguas. Did I say that right? Gimag Gimaguas? With their soft pastel colour palette mixed in with the harsh silver buckle and grommet details being added on. I could talk so much about their brown but I better move on. Now talking of brands, let's go to the more high street style brands. And no, I'm not talking about Zara and Primark, but I'm talking old school, baby. I think I have to mention just by, what's the word? I can't remember, but Juicy Couture, but also brands like Tommy Hilfiger and American Apparel. And we're already seeing big influencers such as Devin Carlson wearing Boy London. And you already know if she's doing it, we're doing it right. Even linking this all back to pop culture today, Kendall Jenner is a new face for Tommy Hilfiger. If it doesn't go back to the Kardashians, is it really pop culture? Anyways, I've probably talked your ear off now. Uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Like, out of all the ones I've made so far, I'm most interested to hear your thoughts on this one. Do you agree or not? Make sure you guys follow me on my socials. Please subscribe, because uh, I'm posting two to three times a week at the moment. And have a good day, and I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.